The Grobe 4V18, 20, and 24 are great vertical bandsaws, and I've owned a few. Uh, they've got a wide range of blade speed control, and this one even has a blade welder. Uh, adjustable pneumatic power feed, tilt table, variable speed, and a four-speed gearbox. Uh, it's got a three horsepower, three-phase motor, and uh, I think all those units have this modular power unit, which uh, is actually, at the bottom of it is a cast full of concrete, so it won't tip forward. Uh, the last one I bought came with a hidden problem. The four-speed transmission worked fine, but the very drive adjustment wheel was frozen. I couldn't move it. Uh, I took it apart, and uh, what happened was the previous owner had adjusted it out all the way and locked it in place. Uh, I could see why after removing the cover on the base. <clears throat> Both halves of the variable speed Reeves drive pulley sheave were uh, freely spinning on the motor shaft, and they had adjusted the motor support all the way out so the belt would kind of sort of still grab the center of the pulley. Uh, with these very drive units on the Grobe, there's very little bearing width on the splines that the sheaves slide on so little that if they run dry at grease and there's no lube cushion to absorb a little of the impulse from the motor starting, the sheave internal splines will crumble and slip, and then the spline shaft will just ream out the bores of both pulleys and the whole assembly will spin on the motor shaft. The replacement vary drive unit is $795, and failure, according to the tech at Grob that I spoke to, is not unusual. Well, here's the vary drive for this Grob bandsaw here. And in case you don't know how these things work, uh, there's a uh, like a turnbuckle on the side of the machine with a hand crank. And as you crank that mach that uh, thing in and out, it actually moves the, the motor. And this uh, very drive assembly is mounted on the motor. So <clears throat> as the motor moves further and closer away, it, uh, it this thing is spring-loaded. And it makes the pulley wider and narrower so the belt will ride up and down in this uh, sheave here, the variable width sheave. Um, the, the distance, uh, rather the diameter of this thing runs from about uh, 8 inch OD on the outside to uh, an effective diameter of about uh, 4 inches or so when the, when the belt's all the way down on the inside. Um, but uh, as I'll show you in a minute, this thing is shot, so we're going to attempt to do this uh, by another method. Okay, let's take a look at the variable speed drive on this bandsaw. Circlip, spacer, cover for the spring. This thing is so worn out, this spring is supposed to sit on top of this pulley here. And it's spun around so many times and worn so much against the splines here that it's completely worn through and allows the spring to drop down in here, which doesn't deal with any good. <clears throat> The spline bearing area where it's supposed to slide is just this small half inch wide area around here and you can see it's worn so much that it's actually uh, sawn itself a bigger bore here. Um, so this thing is shot. Uh, the original intention was to get a piece of spline coupling and uh, braze it in here so it could uh, slide on some spline shafting. <clears throat> but uh, there's not a whole lot of material to work with here. Uh, this is also supposed to slide on this here and from spinning around I mean it's probably okay but it's not uh, not a real tight fit either <clears throat> this is the entire area of the spline that's supposed to work along here and this one's only about three-eighths of an inch wide so you can see that there's not a whole lot of uh, area there to, to work against that spline when this thing starts up against the inertia of uh, both this you know, this pulley assembly, this very drive assembly, and the large pulley that goes into the input shaft of the transmission. Uh, so if this thing dries out uh, and runs out of grease, uh, it's just going to keep working back and forth. Cast iron's real brittle. Um, you know, it gets a little uh, dried out, no grease, and uh, it's just going to pound and pound until it uh, falls apart like this one did. This whole thing was full of cast iron dust when I took it apart. Um, this area here is actually supposed to bear on this part of the shaft and that's kind of wallowed out too. <clears throat> this shaft here, uh, the motor shaft is an inch and an eighth uh, keyed motor shaft which we can get coupling for but um, the problem is this thing runs so far up in here 
that this is such a thin wall that if I got, if I got just some stock shafting, 21 spline, inch and 3 8 shafting, I think this is the standard stuff, but it's custom machined, obviously. Uh, there's no way that you could build this thing uh, out of individual pieces and weld it all together and have it work. It would have to be machined out of solid. Um, and if you wanted, you'd have to uh, broach a blind keyway and you'd also have to broach or uh, machine all these splines and uh, it's just there's not enough here to work with um, so we have another potential possibility to make this thing work <clears throat> I figured I could repair my unit with standard drive components but after taking it apart I could see that even if I got a motor keyed shaft coupler some spline shafting and a spline coupler to slice up and braze into the reboard pulleys. There was not enough room to build up a replacement for that $362 shaft from separate parts. It would all need to be machined from a solid bar and that would include a blind broached keyway for the motor shaft and all those splines. The very drive unit adjusts from about four and a half to eight inches and the transmission pulley is 13 inches. Uh, the drive motor on this is three horsepower, three phase. I figure I could put a fixed pulley on the motor to replace the bad vary drive and add a variable frequency AC drive to retain the variable speed capability. I bought a cheap Chinese VFD on eBay, but I got a five horsepower one rather than three because it was only a $30 difference and two horsepower of headroom might make a difference when using potentially sketchy electronics. Since this saw has a four speed transmission, I would still have plenty of torque because the fixed pulley I chose was sized near the small end of the original very drive range. Thus the motor would be more overdriven than underdriven when adjusted with the variable frequency drive, so I wouldn't lose power like when running a variable frequency drive at very low speed. I would also gain the ability to run the saw on single phase power. One obstacle was that the transmission pulley is not a standard V-belt pulley. The very drive belt is considerably wider and the transmission input shaft is not a regular keyed shaft like on the motor. Replacing both pulleys and the belt with a standard V-belt setup would require machining on both parts and the large pulleys get pretty expensive. The solution was to modify a double sheave adjustable pulley so that I could run the stock very drive belt and stock transmission pulley. <clears throat> Here's the very drive belt and a double sheave pulley that when I machined off the center would allow adjusting to a good fit for the belt. The pulley is adjusted so that the belt stays on the, just the tapered section of the pulley and clears the center turned down part and gives an effective diameter the same as the very drive had when it was adjusted in its original configuration to the smallest diameter. The original very drive adjustment crank is just now used for uh, belt tensioning only. I ordered a 5 horsepower Chinese AC drive on eBay even though the motor is only 3 horsepower. I figured I'd be uh, give me an extra little extra headroom in case they skimped on this uh, inexpensive unit. I wanted to mount this very uh, variable frequency drive outside the cabinet to keep it cool and it wouldn't fit in there anyway. Seeing the frequency readout on the unit was not really necessary anyway because neither the frequency or motor RPM show the actual blade speed because the transmission could be in any gear. So I made a special conduit for printing on a 3D printer in SolidWorks. <clears throat> and then printed it out with no supports and it came out pretty good. I installed it on the drive and step drilled the electrical cabinet and then mounted the drive where it wouldn't get smashed. <clears throat> then I installed a normally open uh, twist on switch. The diagram in the manual for the variable frequency drive is incorrect as it shows a momentary switch uh, but, it wouldn't, but that wouldn't work and uh, it requires a maintained on off switch. The switch is then wired in series with the saw when the door safety lock interlock switches so that the uh, saw will actually shut off if the doors are open. The variable frequency uh, drive requires a 5k pot for speed control and I put that underneath the on off switch. Configuring the driver parameters was not very straightforward because of a poorly written manual. I set the machine up so that once turned on the pot will adjust the frequency from 30 hertz to 120 hertz. It'll turn off the motor below 30 hertz so it won't damage the motor just sitting there uh, humming you know, at a very, very low RPM trying to start. With the modified pulley and variable frequency drive, the saw works great. I can adjust the speed with the knob up at the control panel instead of cranking a harder to turn hand wheel down by the floor on the side, and I don't need a phase converter 
The total repair cost was 25% of what a new very drive pulley would have cost. In addition, because I can adjust the motor speed from 30 to 120 hertz, I actually have a wider speed range than the original very drive, and I won't lose torque at low speed when it's needed most because I used a pulley at the small end of what the OEM very drive size, size range was. If your machine has a strip drive and you want to make this conversion, I might be able to supply a modified motor pulley. Just send me an email. This uh, VFD modification is especially effective with this saw because of the gearbox. We can take a look at the ratios here. Uh, the original Vera drive ratio was 2.88 to 1.63 to 1, uh, giving a gearbox input speed range of 604 to 1067 RPM. With a fixed pulley and an AC drive that I can adjust the motor from half to double its base RPM, uh, that is the speed it runs at 60 hertz. I can get 335 to 1338 RPM or even wider than that if I want or just dial back the speed range uh, that I have the AC drive set to uh, to just to the stock speed range of the original drive if I limit the frequency range, uh, range allowed by the AC drive from 54 to 95 hertz. Uh, Tubal Kane uh, did a great YouTube video series on attempts to slow down a Delta 14 inch saw and although the most useful was a variable frequency drive conversion or a, uh, I think he might also use the DC motor even that was not optimal because of how slow the motor had to be run to get the blade speed in the right range for cutting steel it'd be pretty cool to put a tachometer on the actual blade wheel set to uh, to read in feet per minute but that's a project for another day